Hello, I'm Scott Donaldson, Director and CEO of BMC Minerals Limited. So Scott, as a foreign investor, what are the kind of qualities or characteristics of a country or region that are necessary for investment in mining specifically? You know, when we uh, first came to Canada uh, as, a, as a group of professionals, we were looking for a jurisdiction that had the following, following characteristics. Number one, we, was, we were looking for geology. So first and foremost, if the geology is wrong, then nothing else can make up for it. Secondly, we were, um, as a result of the geology, attracted to Western Canada, but we were looking for a stable jurisdiction. So geopolitically, we, need to be, we needed to be in a place that wasn't, um, wasn't rife with corruption, had uh, good laws, had a history of mining, where, where people understood mining, and where we had, uh, from a permitting and regulatory regimes, well, easy to understand, straightforward, simple, where we believed that we could achieve outcomes. Uh, and so we ended up deciding that uh, Western Canada was a good place geologically. And then um, when we came to the Yukon, we decided to, we spent some time in the Yukon. We spoke to the government officials. We spoke to uh, the average person in the street. We went to the local pub. We talked to the people in the bar. We went to some of the local communities, the First Nations communities. We spoke to um, chief and council in Ross River, for example. We talked to them about mining. We basically had to satisfy ourselves that this was a place that we wanted to be. It seemed to tick all the boxes, and so here we are. We also looked at infrastructure, and, and Canada has got good infrastructure. We, we spent two weeks uh, looking at ports and highways and, and roads and how to get from point A to point B, and could we build a project, be bringing material in, where we'd be taking concentrate out, where would we take it from, did we have to cross the border? Those sorts of issues are really important, and Canada ticked a lot, a lot of boxes. I, I, and I remember that when we uh, sat down with the, with the Yukon government representatives, um, before we'd even chosen a project, before we had decided we were going to come to the Yukon, but we sat down and talked about infrastructure and uh, the Yukon people were quite apologetic about the infrastructure. We actually quite liked it. Um, I've developed a lot of mines in places that perhaps not as cold as the Yukon, but certainly equally challenging uh, from their own perspective in terms of no infrastructure whatsoever. Um, you know, three days drive to get somewhere um, Whereas with the Yukon, for example, um, you know, you're five hours drive from the capital of the Yukon. So fantastic, uh, fantastic infrastructure really on a world basis, uh, although perhaps, perhaps the locals don't appreciate that. And so how receptive has the Yukon mining ecosystem been uh, to you and, and how receptive do you feel it is to foreign investors in general? Look, I think the Yukon's been very good. We, we're lucky that we are in a, um, in a part of the world where mining is well understood. I mean, mining's been happening in the Yukon for 120 years. So uh, Yukoners understand mining. Uh, Yukoners understand that the, you know, the long-term benefits that mining brings, and they understand that mining can transform a community. Uh, interestingly enough, there's not a lot of hard rock mining in the Yukon, but that is starting to change. Uh, there are now three mines, three hard rock minings in the Yukon. When we first arrived, there was one. Um, so, so that's a positive. I think that's a, a big positive for the Yukon. We uh, spoke at length with the local communities from, from where we are. Before we even made a decision to buy uh, the project, we spoke to the local chief and council more than once and the local people in the community. There was a um, a fundamental understanding of what mining is about and what mining companies bring. And, and that was probably uh, the big thing for us was that we felt that the people of the Yukon were generally receptive to the idea of mining. And so um, you know, that is a very big part. Nobody wants to be operating a business in a community where the people don't want that business. There are uh, government incentives or, or tax breaks or mechanisms in place to facilitate foreign direct investment, as they are pretty much globally. 
Um, which ones did you take advantage of uh, as, a, as a mining foreign investor in the Yukon? And what additional supports do you think could increase the Yukon's uh, viability as a, as a foreign investment destination? The Yukon, like many mining jurisdictions, does have a number of support programs for exploration, for example, co-investment in exploration, uh, to build the, uh, the knowledge base of the Yukon. And the, and the Yukon has done, Yukon governments, successive governments have done quite well uh, in uh, making sure that there is a, a base load of data available for people that might want to explore in the Yukon. And that's, that's, a, that's a program that has been over generations. And, and good jurisdictions have those programs. Um, look, I, I would like to highlight, I think, that, that there are many programs run by the Yukon government, but the single biggest advantage of the Yukon, and one, one that we have seen across all political parties in the Yukon, is the ability and the willingness of government and government um, ministers, um, government bodies, to actually sit down and discuss reasonably and sensibly um, your project and what you want to do with the project and really to understand uh, what it is you're talking about. That's not the case everywhere you go. And, and perhaps in places that are less familiar with mining, um, then you walk in and you talk to people about what you want to do and they don't understand. In the Yukon, when you walk in to talk to somebody, they understand. And that, that is the single biggest thing that I would say the Yukon has got going for it. What is the availability of, of, of talent, though, for a mining company on site uh, and in terms of managerial skills? Um, and, uh, and how competitive do you think the Yukon is in that respect for mining companies? Well, we, we bought the project that we own, the Kutsukaya Polymetallic project. We bought that in January 2015. And when we, when we bought it, the first thing we did was we uh, employed a crew of people mostly geologists and people in the geology field to go uh, to the project and re-log about 50 kilometers worth of exploration core that had been generated over the previous 20 years. In parallel with that, we drilled about another um, 30,000 meters of drilling over, over a period of time. And we employed a crack crew, I would have to say as good a crew as we would get anywhere of geologists and geoscientists to do that work. The majority of people that we employed came from the Yukon. Mm -hmm. And so I would have to say that that gave us great heart in year one in relation to the quality of the technical people that we could employ in the Yukon. But then we also um, employed a lot of people from the local um, community of Ross River. And, and a little further afield in, in Whitehorse, Watson Lake. And we were quite impressed with the, uh, the level of um, uh, competency of the people we employed. And I, I've got to say that we uh, have only seen that improve over the, over the six years that we've been here. And I think um, we employed in 2019, we employed about 80% of our, of our people and about 80% of our contracts went to local Yukoners and local First Nations groups. And that wasn't because we were doing favours, that was because those groups and those people were competent and experienced and were capable of delivering the right result at the right standard on the, in the right time at the right cost. And so I've got to say that um, we've been very happy with the level of competency and the level of service that we've got from Yukon businesses. I would say, in answer to your question, that A, we were very pleased when we bought the project and had our first year, we were very pleased with the level of expertise residing in the Yukon. But I'm sure that when we build this mine and we have all of those people that we put through training programs and assisted and worked with and supported and have taken the opportunity to take advantage of that support. When we put all those people on, on the project working, um, I'm very confident that we will be very impressed that we will have a project that is mainly Yukon run and mainly First Nations start. There is sometimes perhaps a, a misconception about the value of foreign direct investment. I know in Canada, we've had situations where 
foreign in, uh, ownership of resource uh, in resources in particular or assets was was sort of you know uh, it created s some kind of fears. What would you say to Canadians or others looking at Canada? Is the impact of FDI on local communities uh, in the Yukon or in other parts of the country? How would you summarize it? Foreign direct investment can be a positive or a negative, depending on how the investment is intended and how uh, the investor behaves. Um, I think I think if an investment comes in, investment has to come from somewhere. The money comes from the money around the world comes from the same financial bucket, and so ultimately, what you're looking for in a foreign investor is someone that brings something to the party and it can't just be money it needs to be sure it needs to be capital but it needs to be um, expertise it needs to be the right attitude and ultimately what you're looking for out of your foreign investor is someone that leaves behind something that's better than what they found originally whether that be capacity or infrastructure or um, education or uh, a body of wealth or um, opportunity, increased opportunity, doesn't really matter. But as long as the investor brings something to the party that's not just money and leaves more than it takes. And that, that's always been our attitude, that we wanted to leave a long-term legacy. Um, you know, the Kudzakaya project is going to leave, uh, or is going to generate around 600 to $700 million dollars in, in direct taxes and taxes to Canada, taxes to the Yukon, royalties to the Yukon, and um, payments to, to local First Nations. And those are the, that's direct. That's, that's not including the benefits talking about the, the long term infrastructure improvements, the uh, educational benefits for a whole generation of, of locals, for uh, cross industry skill sets, for indirect benefits. And so you need to be looking at those, look at the whole picture, not just at the money that might be brought into it in, in by a foreign investor, because if all you're getting is money, then that's not good enough. You need more, you need to know. Uh, as, an, as an investor, you need to know that you're going to leave behind a legacy that you can be proud of because you're going to make another investment at some other place in the world. And you need to have, you need to stand on your reputation. And you're only as good as your last mistake. And so if you walk into a community and you say, here we are, and this is who we are, first question they're going to say is, what did you do before? And then they'll go and talk to those people. And whatever you did before is going to be, um, it's like a sheet of pure driven snow, isn't it? Every step you show, every step you take will show. And so as an investor, you want to leave behind a legacy that's positive. And if someone's seen an investor coming in, you need to see that they're bringing something positive for the long term.